Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. It's Tuesday, February 19th, 2013 on Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. The headlines uh, should be with the links in YouTube's video description, unless of course we have technical problems. All right, so we left off with here talking about engineered consent, how ecologists, eugenicists are urging government to move beyond existent levels of public permission in order to shift the, new, the norms, to make the new normal. They're always redefining what normal is, and they're doing that very, very fast now. They're, usually they do it slowly, incrementally, and they're still doing that, um, but they're just moving it up faster and allowing public sentiment to later catch up with the regulation, so you don't know. So when they put out crap articles like this, this is part of the engineer consent. They put up this stuff over here, they give you scary statistics, and then they give in the officials and the authorities to give these real tough statements. Um, and uh, they're trying to have you change your mind so that you can, uh, that they're just gonna go ahead and pass regulations and laws, and then afterwards, oh, you know, maybe they were right. So we know that gun-free zones don't work as planned, and uh, we know that they're what? Magnets for mass shooters. We know that the world is getting crazier, and as it's getting crazier, and our consent is being engineered, people are becoming more desperate. As the economy is degrading, they're becoming more desperate, and uh, they are resorting to suicide. And I'll be getting into that probably, what, this video or the next video. We're talking about a gun owner. Um, I don't know where this was, but uh, basically, uh, Prince Edward, he basically uh, shot uh, these suspects that intruded in his house. Feds buying two billions uh, rounds of ammunition. Uh, also here, these ammunitions actually being short, out of supply, almost gone. So, but this is where I wanted to start off with. DHS supplier provides shooting targets of American gun owners. I heard the, listen to the uh, audio. I couldn't believe it. They call it non-traditional threats. A provider of realistic shooting uh, targets. Uh, to the Department of Homeland Security and other federal agencies have created a line of non-traditional threat targets that include pregnant women, mothers in playgrounds, and elderly American gun owners. So it says no more hesitation, pregnant women threat. That's one of them. So it goes on here and says that uh, law enforcement targets incorporated is a 21-year designer and uh, a full service provider of training targets for the Department of Homeland Security and Justice Department and thousands of law enforcement agencies throughout the country. The company's website offers a line of no more hesitation targets designed to give officers the experience of dealing with deadly force shooting scenarios with subjects that are not the norm, see the new norm during training. So this is the new norm. What's the new norm? Pregnant women threat, older man with shotgun, older man in home with shotgun, older women with gun, uh, young school, age girl, I guess, I don't know, no gun, or just, just, I guess if you bomb kids overseas with drones, I guess you don't really care. It says young mother on playground, so she could be a threat, and little boy with a real gun, but actually it could be a fake gun, right? Because they, they got students that get suspended and uh, expelled uh, for what? For having toy guns, and they'll bring it in for what? For show and tell. This is an interesting point. This was uh, discussed with me probably four or five, maybe longer, eight years ago by a, a relative who's in the Marine Corps and he was in Somalia and that, and he was talking about how, and uh, I don't know what his source was, but back after World War I, the US, or the Allies side, uh, basically needed to start using targets more with people on them uh, to desensitize the troops because they were realizing that they weren't firing on, uh, they weren't firing as much on their quote targets because they were human beings. So they had to desensitize them by making these little dog targets and these different uh, silhouette targets to desensitize the troops. So that's why in World War II, man, they did, you could tell how they had went from World War I to World War II, how fast they had these soldiers ready, willing to kill, kill, kill. And of course they got burned out because it's not natural, but mostly because they're, they're you know, the cause, it wasn't, it wasn't a good cause about expanding the empire so but my last point is what there's a movie that i just saw uh recently about world war one it was something called noel or something uh but it depicted you know them these guys in the trenches the french uh the germans and the british and you can see how they were just having like this uh kind of armistice on christmas and stuff like that and you know it was i think it was propaganda in itself but at the same time, it just goes to show you how much it's changed. 
uh, Granny, get your gun and pizza discount in Virginia Beach. Most pizza shop owners would be terrified if a customer bought an AK-47 to pick up a pizza. But it goes in and says, the owner of All Round Pizza is encouraging as of Friday has been given 15% discount to anyone who walks in carrying a gun or concealed handgun permit. He said he got the idea from an ice cream shop in Utah that offered a similar discount. He said it's been awesome. 80% of the customers in Holland Road shop took advantage of the discount, carrying 9mm and uh, one brought an AK-47. Gallup survey says 72% dissatisfied with the U.S. direction. Also, you have what? We're talking about cops. Uh, Robert Saylor's death ruled a homicide. I guess it's a basically man with Down syndrome died in police custody. The death of a man with Down syndrome who was reportedly killed after lying face down in police custody has been ruled a homicide. He died of asphyxiation. He was 26 years old, according to the medical examiner's ruling. He went into distress when he was put face down on the ground. So... Police were called to uh, this movie theater by employees who couldn't get Sailor to leave. He had come to the theater with a health aide, uh, paid permission for Zero Dark Thirty, but allegedly remained after it was over. Arizona court says you don't have to be high to get a DUI, so it says here that the court ruled that marijuana users don't need to be actually impaired to be successfully prosecuted for driving under the influence. The ruling came Tuesday in the case of a man who tested positive for an inactive marijuana uh, metabolite that remains in the body for weeks after the high from smoking marijuana has worn off. The ruling overturned a decision by a superior court judge who said that it didn't make sense to prosecute people for driving under influence if they're not actually under the influence. And we'll finish up with this. TSA uh, screeners continue to lie to passengers about legality of recording at checkpoints. Uh, it's, it's sad, it's a sad uh, video. Uh, somehow I found a way to laugh because she was saying I don't want to go to Disney World. It just sounds, it's just very uh, telling of today. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why I wouldn't want to take my kids to Disney World. But uh, it says here, by now it's becoming clear that the TSA screeners know that recording is allowed at security checkpoints in airports. They just choose to tell passengers that it is not allowed with the hope that the passenger will not know any better. So... In the above video, you can check it out, links will be posted, uh, recorded earlier this month at an airport. Uh, it says here, a mother begins recording a TSA screener's attempt to frisk her daughter who's in a wheelchair. The girl appears to be around three, is crying and saying she doesn't want to go to Disney World, so you can imagine how scared she must have been. The mother starts, uh, starts the video recording, and then the TSA screener tells her it's illegal to record. So, Next up, we have strict new hygiene rules for child care will wrap kids in a bubble. So it goes on, it says, kids will be banned from blowing out candles on uh, birthday cakes under strict new hygiene rules for child care. But it goes in here and it says that um, they're urging uh, child care centers to stand up to parents who insist on sending a sick child to daycare even if they have medical certificates. So also uh, daycare staff will not have to wash toys, doorknobs, floors, cushion covers every day. The new guidelines state that kids who want to blow out a candle on their birthday should bring their very own cupcake to avoid blowing germs over uh, a shared cake so and this is about uh, um, uh, killing uh, basically relationships with people uh, to distance us so that like I said we're already being pushed on our own uh, away from our families and killing uh, our families basically through uh, you know engineering society I've went over this many times uh, you know with divorce rates everything else promiscuity and uh, this is just another way to keep people isolated U.S. training of Mexican troops has escalated in step with Mexico's murder rate. Boots on the ground instruction carried out by U.S. military in Mexico City. Uh, this uh, Campecha and uh, Chipas, home of the Zapatistas. <laughs> U.S. training of Mexican military forces spiked in fiscal years 2010-2011, co coinciding with a sharp rise in drug war homicides in Mexico. Analysis of records made public under Foreign Assistance Act. And we already know drones are taken uh, to the skies in the U.S. Federal authorities step up efforts to license surveillance aircraft for law enforcement and other uses among privacy concerns. So, uh, you know, you go in here and you can vote if you think it uh, should be allowed for police departments. 85% say no, but it doesn't really matter. So this here, while national debate has erupted over the Obama regime's lethal drone strikes overseas, federal authorities have stepped up efforts to license surveillance drones for law enforcement and other uses in U.S. airspace. And we'll uh, finish with this. UN drones uh, killed more Afghan civilians in 2012. The number of U.S. drone strikes in Afghanistan jumped 72% in 2012, killing at least 16 civilians in a sharp increase from the previous year. 
Overall, a full year toll of civilian deaths in 2012 declined compared to the previous year, according to a UN report, but the toll spiked in the second half of the year compared to the same period earlier this year. Conflict-related violence also struck more women and girls last year, with 301 killed and 563 wounded, a 20% increase from 2011. All right, so back to the meteor news. We have, remember this article, U.S. tested new weapon, no meteor in, uh, uh, whatever, Chela Beans. Um, yeah, I think, you know, Alex Jones was getting cre uh, credit or saying that, oh, he's spreading conspiracy theories. Well, I don't think he was the one that started him. I think a lot of people thought there was something a little fishy about the whole thing. Um, my biggest concern was what where's the stuff? Where's the meteor? Why isn't the hole why is the hole so small if it's just if it's one of the biggest ones in a hundred years? Russian meteor explosion not caused by asteroid flyby. The meteor explosion over Russia that injured more than five hundred uh, and damaged hundreds of buildings was not caused by an asteroid zooming close by the Earth Friday afternoon. So just pure coincidence, that's what they say. So it goes on here and it says that uh, it pancaked and exploded. It said it's far too early to provide estimates of energy released or provide a reliable estimate of the original side, size. They said that the bolide event was not associated at, the, at all with the incoming asteroid 2012 DA-14, which will fly within 17,000 miles of the Earth when it passes safely by our planet today. So this already happened, of course, but this is what I realized, guys was that what better time, what better time to demonstrate or practice these, these weapons than on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, uh, on a day like that where they're expecting something to happen in space. So it's a good cover. Russian meteor, meteorite conspiracy theories debunk. So the mainstream media, the Atlantic Wire, has debunked the conspiracy theories. So, but either way, the meteor was the largest to hit the Earth in over a century. So it said it weighed around 10,000 tons. Well, how could they know if they don't have any pieces of it? 55 feet in dia diameter, making it the largest such object to hit the Earth in more than a century. Then you had biggest piece of 55-foot meteor found so far is 7 millimeters, and 7 millimeters happens to be just 0.26 inches. The numbers are pretty staggering. The meteor that rocked Russia, biggest since 1908, at 55 feet in diameter, estimates by NASA, but the largest meteorite found to date by scientists says here it's just 0.26 inches in diameter. It says here it says something a little bigger should be out there, NASA scientists said. When you have a fireball of this size, we would expect a large number of meteorites to reach the surface. In this case, there was probably some large ones. Yeah, it left a 20-foot wide hole. I mean, that's not that big for that size of, uh, of an object. They said uh, also divers didn't find anything at the bottom. Of the, of the so now the whole world has meteor fever. That's right. It says, never in the history of things falling out of the sky have people been so excited about a simple chondrite that's 10% metallic iron and nickel alloy. It says it, uh, it's offering a little something for everyone. So again, it sounds like a, like uh, you know, Edge of Darkness, just a story that's so convoluted that nobody could actually get the truth of it. And that's, that's what it's did it. That's what it's doing. Atlantic Wire, of course, saying the world has meteor fever and conspiracy theory debunked by them, the authority of it. Russia to spend billions on asteroid defense Interesting. Moscow believes its uh, in, uh, operable national defense against threats from outer space can be built within 10 years' time, as if it's not already. The 500 kiloton explosion of space bolide above the Urals region has sped up allocation of some $2 billion to prevent future threats. Russian scientists have presented a federal program designed to counteract space threats. Here you go, guys, just like the last video, right? The program has nothing to do with Hollywood sci-fi movie scenarios. No uh, direct energy lasers that the Russians and U.S. have are going to be equipping drones with soon. Uh, annihilators or Bruce Willis drilling a huge piece of rock rushing towards the Earth. They want to spend 58 billion rubles on asteroid defense system. It's going to cost a lot of money, right? They need to legitimize what they're doing. Remember this again. I'll keep covering this. Uh, Warner Von Braun, the hoax alien invasion from space. It wasn't just that, it was also what? Asteroids. So he had told this Dr. Rosen uh, basically that she needed to do what she had to do to stop the weaponization of space. Failure to do so would uh, make the secretive transnational power move permanently to take control of the planet through a hoax alien invasion or threat from outer space. Brown said that um, she would need to notice a certain spin on the news which would illustrate the need to build space-based weaponry. Apparently, Von Braun uh, told this uh, Rosen that Russians are going to be considered to be the enemy. 
and we'll return with that theme when we come back in part three. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.